Hi everybody, hope you are doing well. Well, I thought it would be a good idea to do a deep dive into um, clinical trials that are going to change the future of medicine and may impact a disease, either you or someone you love, it may impact the treatment course. So there's been a lot of change in technology, of course, in medicine, what's coming up? Well, let's go over the first one. Uh, so let's see, the first one is a diabetes drug for Parkinson's disease. So here's the backstory on that one. There's a phase three trial for a medication called EXENATIDE. -E -E. I'm going to say exnatide um, in Parkinson's disease, and it's a very um, well received trial. Um, it has the big advantage of being a repurposed drug that is already widely used in older patients. Uh, if there's a positive result, if, if there's a positive result, it's something that could be really adopted into everyday clinical practice. Um, this drug has reasonable preclinical data and some promising phase two data. So, in the Parkinson's disease world, which there's not an animal model for really great predictive validity, this is probably as good as it gets. So, we'll keep an eye on that one. A diabetes drug. Um, used in Parkinson's disease. Now I wanted to know because I treat a lot of diabetes and I prescribe a lot of uh, medications. Ozempic is the biggest one that's hit the market and all the celebrities on it and they're getting really skinny. But the problem with Ozempic is it's an injectable medication so that's one problem. It, it's a needle. You have to do it every day. Um, and it's pri primarily for type 2 diabetics. Yes, it improves insulin resistance and thereby you can lose fat and lose weight. But I always wait till something's been on the market a while. Well, just goes to show, I read something online that it's called Ozempic face, that it's literally causing an aging of the face. What a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I want to get skinny, but then I'm going to get really like, I'm going to age 10 years in my face. So I don't know what's going on with that. I have not been prescribing that because, again, it's a new medication. I'm waiting for that to be out. I usually like to wait till things are on the market for about a year, and I'm like that with any new drug that's hit the market. And that's always been the way in medicine until this latest um, injection, you know, came out and everybody was told it was safe and effective. Turns out there may be some problems. So I think it's always a good idea to wait till something's been on the market for a while. I know that's not always the case with everybody, but okay, let's look at the next exciting. Oh, I was going to look up what that medication was and give my thoughts on that one for Parkinson's. Let's check that out really quick. If I know the brand name. Oh, Bietta. Okay, I know what this is. So Bietta was all the rage, I want to say 10 years ago, and I thought it was really cool because they derived that medication from Gila monsters, you know, those really scary lizards that live in the Sonoran Desert, and once they bite down on you, they don't let go. Even if, even if you cut off their body, the head's still attached. Um, I live in Arizona. I've, I, I don't even know if I've ever seen a Gila monster, and I do a lot of uh, hiking and walking in the desert, but... Um, yeah, so that's where Bietta was. Now, again, it was an injectable for type 2 diabetics, but then it lost favor. Um, it was causing some side effects. I cannot remember off the top of my head. I just remember we all stopped prescribing it for a while. So, wow, they're looking at Bietta for Parkinson's disease. That's interesting. I'll be curious to see how that phase 3 trial ends up going. So, the next one is um, ADC for ovarian cancer. Now, this drug trial is for a drug, I'm going to have to pronounce it and then I may have to spell it, Mirvetuximab soravtansine. I'm not even going to spell that, but it's from a company called Immunogen. So this received um, FDA approval on November 14th based on a single arm trial where 106 patients were involved in that had a disease called platinum resistant ovarian cancer. Um, these tumors had a high expression of the folate receptor alpha, and had, they had been treated with up to three prior regimens, and at least one which included Avastin. So, with these patients with this, uh, they got approval to move on to the phase three trial. I guess it's called the Mirasol trial. So, this drug is an antibody drug conjugate, or an ADC. These agents are already being used for the treatment of several solid and liquid tumors, but this is the first for ovarian cancer. 
I had a friend that passed from ovarian cancer, I want to say, maybe eight years ago. And she was probably the healthiest person I know. And I mean, I don't think we talk about ovarian cancer enough. So to me, this is very interesting. The ADC field is expanding rapidly. Um, there was another medication called Trastuzumab Deruxtecan, and that was approved in April 2022 uh, for use against breast cancer. Uh, it's been a long time since a new cytotoxic agent has been approved for ovarian cancer. So among treatments for gynecological cancers like ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, etc., this is only the second ADC approved thus far. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on that, and I'll keep you posted. All right, let's move to the third thing. Oh, this is a CRISPR, CAS9, for treating muscular dystrophy. Well, let's see about this one. Muscle stem cells are the only cells that can regenerate muscle. In patients who have genetic muscular dystrophy, in which the muscle wastes for genetic reasons, these stem cells carry mutations. But these mutations can now be corrected with the, the CRISPR, CAS9, and other tools. Correcting muscle stem cells means the muscle can be rebuilt, which has not been previously possible whatsoever in patients with muscular dystrophy. Do you remember the Jerry Lewis telethons? That was for muscular dystrophy. This is exciting. CRISPR technology is amazing, by the way. So I'm excited to see what happens with this. Well, let's see what the study involves. So let's see, uh, the muscular dystrophy patients are a group of about, um, oh, they got a group of about 50 different diseases of the muscular dystrophies that lead young people and children to lose their ability to walk, breathe, make them wheelchair bound within just a couple years. Um, so the stem cells are able to rebuild the muscles and this is what they're gonna be testing in a trial called BASKET. In the BASKET trial, there's two major questions. The first is about safety. And of course, they wanna see that nothing happens to the patients that makes, for example, the disease worse, such as, such as a gene encoding, a tumor suppressor being switched on. Uh, and then they do all kinds of preclinical safety tests to preclude that possibility. New proteins will be made by these stem cells, which probably have not been seen by the patient's immune system, so it could attack this foreign protein. So they're gonna inject the cells that are repaired into the patient in an autologous manner and check a few months later to see if new muscle is built. Wow, so the second question they're gonna address in the trial is clinical improvement. And okay, so that's really cool. So they're gonna begin this in June, July of 2023, so this summer. How amazing is that? I think that's great. Okay, here is another study. Um, cervical cancer screening in the vaccinated. Okay, let's see what this study's about. Prophylactic vaccines against HPV first rolled out about 15 years ago. And I remember that when people were getting the HPV vaccine, um, quite a few people had side effects like Guillain-Barre disease, um, but they were still really pushing it in young children, um, as young as 10 years old. And I guess that's a personal family decision with their pediatrician to decide, is their child sexually active and needs the HPV vaccine that early? But let's read about the study. Um, now again, they were telling this uh, that, that the vaccine would protect women against cervical cancer, and now it's routinely offered to young girls in high-income countries. That's what I just said. As time moves on, uh, more women who were vaccinated as girls become eligible for cervical cancer screening, and it's important to understand the most effective screening approaches in a vaccinated population. This trial is important as it is the first large-scale randomized controlled trial internationally that will assess primary HPV screening in a population that is heavily vaccinated with the HPV vaccine. The finding will assess newer approaches for managing HPV-positive women, and that will be important for cervical screening programs. The COMPASS trial is also assessing new next-generation HPV testing platforms. Uh, okay, we'll keep an eye on that one. Oh, okay, this is interesting. This says it's the Mediterranean Diet for Weight Loss Study. Again, do you remember the book that was out and it was all about following the Mediterranean diet? And there was a doctor that put the book out. What was the name of that book? Oh, God, that drives me crazy. Well, anyway, the Mediterranean diet was pretty much following, you know, low carbohydrates and eating like olive oil and healthy fish and, you know, um, 
nuts and, you know, basically what they eat in Italy and the Mediterranean. Okay, so let's see what it says. No study has ever demonstrated that weight loss and maintenance using an energy-reduced healthy diet and physical activity lowers the risk of cardiovascular disease in people who are overweight. Huh. So no study's ever done that? The look-ahead trial in the USA conducted in people with diabetes has been discontinued owing to the lack of efficacy in reducing the risk of cardiovascular events and mortality after 10 years of follow-up, despite achieving significant differences between interventions and long-term weight loss. So they're hypothesizing that an intensive lifestyle intervention program aimed at weight loss and based on the Mediterranean diet is a sustainable long-term approach for achieving weight loss. That's interesting because I love the Mediterranean diet. I think it's really healthy. I guess I didn't know that no study ever followed it. So now there's going to be a study on it. All right, very cool. And it looks like it's based out of Spain. Okay. This one's about the safe treatment for sleeping sickness. I'm going to skip that because we don't see a lot of that in our country. Um, that's usually more in Africa and whatnot because they get bit by, uh, you know, the insect that spreads sleeping sickness by... Um, the CC fly, the CC fly, and then it gives them that little parasite, and then it causes sleeping sickness. So I'm going to skip that for now because we don't deal with that. Um, I'm going to skip that one. Ooh, let's look at this one: a study on Alzheimer's disease. So this medication is called Lecanemab, and in 2023, um, an investigational monoclonal antibody to amyloid B protofibrils for the treatment of mild cognitive impairment with Alzheimer's disease. So this study is looking at that medication. And let's see, um, the New England Journal of Medicine did publish an article about that in 2022. And data was made available for scrutiny and independent of other physicians. And now it's moved to the phase three trial. In Alzheimer's disease, there is no disease modifying treatments that are clearly proven. That's true. They've tried a few uh, different medications, but Alzheimer's is not cured. Um, so we'll see how this new medication uh, goes once this trial is over. It's saying anything. Um, yeah, so they're looking at the safety of it. Um, okay, so we don't know. And that looks like they're doing that out of Emory School of Medicine. Okay, this is interesting. They're doing a study on the COVID-19 vaccine and HIV. Let's read about that. Uh, in December of 2021, a trial began to enroll almost 14,000 participants in the sub-Saharan African countries. The phase three trial assesses the efficacy of the Moderna vaccine against COVID-19 in adults infected with HIV or with other comorbidities that increase the risk of severe COVID-19. Um, there's an urgent need to characterize infection and viral clearance in people who are immunocompromised, immunocompromised, which will be in the study. The results should be completed by 20, uh, in 2023 that will indicate how many doses of the vaccine are needed for adults with HIV and that puts them at risk for severe COVID. They want to know if the original Moderna vaccine is inferior to the new bivalent one, which includes the spike protein from a SARS-CoV-2 variant of concern. Well, I'll be interested to see how that study ends out because so much more needs to be studied with this new uh, mRNA vaccine for sure. Okay, then there's one on sickle cell. I'm going to skip that. Um, we're gonna, and then the last one I'll talk about Reducing harm from prostate cancer screening. Um, so it says the evidence surrounding testing for the marker PSA. So if you have a man in your life or a husband, they should be screened once a year with a PSA, and that's called a prostate-specific antigen. And that's a number, it's a marker that will elevate, um, of course, in benign prostatic hypertrophy, but it'll really elevate in the presence of prostate cancer. So it's a good screening tool. So this study is looking at that marker and they're saying the PSA is full of conflict as the test may detect prostate cancer, but the, at the expense of treating cancers with little threat to health. Huh. 
They aim to detect only clinically relevant aggressive prostate cancer while minimizing the diagnosis of clinically unimportant low-risk cancers that would constitute overdiagnosis, meaning that they would not progress even if left undetected and untreated. Okay, I understand this because I know there is overdiagnosis and unnecessary biopsy and even chemotherapy when not needed. And I'll compare this to something. In women, there is a type of breast cancer and um, it's um, uh, carcinoma in situ. Uh, and that's when um, it's in the breast cell, but it's not spreading anywhere. And in fact, um, that ductal carcinoma in situ or DCIS, that can remain in the cell maybe until the person dies of natural causes old age. And there has been, I feel like, a rush to overtreat. And I don't blame people. People hear cancer, and yeah, it's scary. But DCIS is one of those, mm, that's something that could watch and wait and monitor before the slashing and burning of radiation, chemotherapy, etc. Or um, a, a volunteer mastectomy, you know. Um, so I get what they're seeing here. So I'll, I'll be curious how that study uh, plays out. So if you're interested, uh, you know, just want to discuss, you know, what's going on in the changes of healthcare. Um, and um, yeah, I'll follow that and I'll let you know if there's any exciting changes because um, I think that's just really interesting to stay on top of. Thanks for being here and I'll see you on the next one.